So a few more details are emerging about the teaser and the production of Dune Part 2. Please like and subscribe to get more content. All right, let's get into it. And I think this is official. This is an official poster where we're seeing somebody going at a sandworm. And I would assume this is meant to be Paul, basically trying to master the worm. There's also an image with Zendaya touching Timothée, and that should be from Dune Part 2. Now, Denise says, everything we're going to get forward is all new. None of it has been replicated from Dune Part 1. I'm a little skeptical there. It is a well-known fact that what we got with Dune Part 1 was a truncated version of the film. It actually was meant to be originally much longer, three hours, but they cut out strategically quite a few minutes. I've done a few videos on this, and I will do more. Hopefully all this is new, and if you are a big fan of the IMAX, it is now 100% IMAX. Before, they couldn't make it 100%, but Dune Part 2 will be 100% IMAX. So presumably, if you get it on DVD, you will get that IMAX experience. Now let's get into the contents of the teaser itself. Some of this is known, but I think we now have some good confirmation on things we didn't know before, and I'm a little bit mixed. We're going to be hearing Uriolan doing some narration, and Denis describes her as a chess player, so she will be a little bit more active here than in the book. She is a presence in the book, but really she's not vital to the plot until the very end when she and Paul basically do something very vital, so apparently she may be doing more scenes than are in the books. I'm okay with that, but we'll have to wait and see how it's done. Apparently there is nothing with the Emperor. We're not going to see Christopher Walken, at least with the teaser. Hopefully we will, and I'll be wrong, but we get no sight of the Emperor, at least for now. We do apparently see a little bit with Fade, and perhaps even the Baron, and here I'm going to be a little bit mixed, but I'm going to save my personal opinion to the end, where apparently the house Harkonnen basically looks very similar to one another. Is that a good idea, bad idea? Well, at least in terms of fighting, Dinny is promising they're going to do a lot. Fade will be very formidable. He will be a very strong fighter. So at least the fight sequences should be interesting. And we're going to see a lot of the war. Now, Dune, the book, does give us a little bit with the Sardaukar and the Fremen going at one another. But it's basically a lot off stage. We only get a little bit with snippets of battles. But apparently Dune Part 2 will be filled with a lot of violence and a lot of battle sequences. So that'll be interesting. And finally, we will get a little bit more with Rebecca Ferguson, and apparently she will have, yes, tattoos on her face as Paul's mother. Hmm, I wonder what was the reasoning behind that. Stylistically, this will have some key differences with the book. They do promise, though, they are going to follow the majority of the plot, so at least the events overall will conform to the book, but, and it will have Denise's own particular style. Zendaya is also promising that Chani will be much more agentic, active than she is in the books. I think she was already pretty active, but apparently if you did want more of her in part two, that will happen. Again, we did see a little bit of that in the other versions with David Lynch and the sci-fi miniseries. So apparently here it will be much more emphasized. Well, probably the biggest issue I have is with Fade and just the weird look he's going with House Harkonnen. I understand with the Baron, they wanted to be super serious, they wanted something dreary, and I was impressed with the performance. Again, it doesn't match the books, but it's like, okay, fine, they're going to do their own thing. I prefer the more flamboyant House Harkonnen and the Baron being a little bit talkative and all over the place. I think that's a better version of the character. Okay, it's fine, they're going to do a more dark version. But now everyone in House Harkonnen is basically going to look alike and have all this dreary demeanor, I just don't know. That that really deflates the characters, I think, just making them so monotonic. I mean, it's fine that they have similar uniforms, but really, like, they all have to look the same? Why? It's a puzzling decision. So I'm wondering how they're going to manage. If Uriolot is going to be more active, is she going to be on Arrakis? Or is she going to travel to Arrakis? How is that going to be handled? And is that going to bend the rules with space travel? Some questions here if this is going to work with the plot of the book. I mean, again, you're free to change certain details. But if you change too many details with the lore, it's going to create a lot of problems. And that's what I was fearful with part one. I didn't mind that it was supposed to be meditative and contemplative. And this will be much more action-filled. But I think the deeper issue is, will this be coherent? And it seems like it will still be like part one. It'll be a little bit all over the place. A lot of great scenes, but a lot of other scenes that are going to be like, what was the point of that? Why all these changes? So there we are. But 
if you did want to see Paul mastering the worm, we will get that with the teaser, and so we will see him as a leader of the Fremen, but again, what kind of leader he is now, I'm not so sure anymore, but we'll have to wait and see how this plays out with the fandom. So I wanted to preview, so hopefully give you a better idea of what to expect with Dune Part 2.